They've got visions. They got visions for cotton farms, rice farms, all kinds of amazing transformations in land use in the future. And they're saying we should be able to do these things without ever having to consult or deal with the native title holders whose interests are going to be affected if we get more rights. And all we're saying is that if you have these visions, because we have a native title interest in those lands, when you stop running cattle and you actually turn them into cotton farms, we're saying you should negotiate with us in relation to those things because you're affecting our title. But you see, they've got visions. They've got visions. They didn't find it for a long time, which was lucky for us, really, when you think about it. I mean, the place has been there forever, as far as I'm concerned, created by the spirits. But it didn't start to appear on the maps of serious potential invaders until the 17th century. In the east, Cottonous problems because of the unreliable availability of water from the Murray-Darling Basin and the damage that their chemicals have done leaching back into the environment. Cotton and the Ord failed completely for the first 10 years because of the insects. They ended up spending more on poison than they actually made on the crop. Putting cotton on the floodplains of the Fitzroy River is not a possibility. Because of the floods in the wet season, and the runoff of chemicals and fertilizers would reproduce the problems of the Murray Darling. So the plan is to bring water from a dam on the Fitzroy in a canal to the edge of the Great Sandy Desert. What are you proposing? No, no, we are proposing damming the Fitzroy, but subject to responsible examination of all the factors involved in achieving that. And then we want to say to the people of even of Western Australia, this is the benefit that we can see and show how we've managed to overcome uh, the environmental problems and to reach a negotiated agreement with the indigenous people. 